Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. Okay, I wanted to talk about the number e and why we use it as a base for exponential functions. Why is it so special? So I've drawn a picture here. Uh, the graph of an arbitrary exponential function, f of x equals b to the x. That's this graph in purple. And I've also drawn its tangent line at the point 0, 1. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to explore the relationship between the base b and the slope of the tangent line. In order to do that, I'm going to use a demonstration from Geometer's Sketchpad. Okay, so you can see I've got graphed the function g of x equals 2 to the x here. It's actually b to the x, but I can change the value of b to any value I want. Uh, that graph is in red, and then the graph of the tangent line is in blue. Right now the slope is 0.693. Let me move this tangent line around. Notice as I move the tangent line, it's still tangent at the point 0, 1. But as I move the tangent line around, the base changes. As I move it so the tangent line is less steep, the base gets smaller. As I move it so the tangent line is more steep, the base gets bigger. And if I moved it so that the tangent line had a negative slope, the base is between 0 and 1. OK, let's take a look at some particular values. When b equals 2, again, the slope is 0 0.693. When b is 3, the slope is 1.099. So that makes me wonder, where's the slope equal to 1? Is it 2.5? No. 2.75? No. It turns out that if I want to get the slope to be exactly 1, I need b to be 2.71828. It's this number e. It's the only base that will make it so that the tangent line has a slope of exactly 1 at 0, 1. OK, so let's summarize what we discovered. If b is greater than 1, then the slope of the tangent line is positive. If b is between 0 and 1, then the slope slope of the tangent is negative. If you want the slope to be exactly 1, you need b to equal e. And e is approximately 2.71828. So that is a little glimpse uh, into what makes the number e special. Now let me give you a definition for the number e. e has a very complicated definition. It's a limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the n. Now to help you understand this definition a little bit better, I'm going to calculate some values for this expression 1 plus 1 over n to the n. So I'll make a little table. Let me start with uh, the value 1. When n equals 1, I get 1 plus 1 over 1, 2, to the 1. So I get 2. And anything past that, I'm going to need my calculator. So let me do this. All right. So when I plug in 10, I'm getting 1 plus 1 over 10 to the 10th power. According to my calculator, it's approximately 2.5937. If I plug in 100, 
I get 1 plus 1 over 100 to the 100th power. It's approximately 2.7048. I'm going to keep going up by powers of 10. So 1,000, I get, I'm not going to write this out anymore, 2.7169. How about a million? Two point seven one eight two eight. So you finally get some convergence once you get n out to a million. It takes quite a while for this limit uh, for this limit to start getting really close for this value to start getting really close to e. But remember that e is defined as the limit of this expression. So the value. The, these values are heading towards e as n goes to infinity. And by two, I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had, no, that's not right. Three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here, or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two picks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>